Welcome back to This is Van Color. Universal public health care is part of our Canadian identity. However, as Canadians face emergency room shutdowns, long wait times, and healthcare staffing shortages, some of the worst among OECD countries, more Canadians, including the government of BC, are actually turning to private healthcare, including outside of our own country. And yet we can't say the P word, privatization, even when other countries have shown that universal, publicly funded healthcare with private competition is possible. Returning to the show to discuss, he's a YouTuber based here in Vancouver with nearly a million subscribers. He is JJ McCullough. JJ, hello. Thank you for returning to the show. Thanks for having me back. Always a pleasure. So I feel like we're in a bit of a paradox here in Canada. More and more Canadians are turning to privatized healthcare out of country, out of province. The government of BC is sending cancer patients to Bellingham effectively to, you know, uh, have private healthcare in, in terms of their cancer treatments. Uh, Bill Morneau has said that the spending for healthcare is unsustainable. So we are spending more on healthcare. We are kind of leaning towards privatization. The healthcare system is failing. And yet it's kind of taboo to say maybe we should privatize some healthcare. Well, I mean, I think it's worth sort of getting into the precise definitions of these terms, because I do sure. think one of our current problems is that we throw around these terms a little too loosey goosey, and they contribute to a climate of public ignorance, which then makes it very difficult to do the things that need to be done. So privatization is when you take something that is being done by the government and you instead you know, turn it into a private corporation. Mm. You know, you take a business that is like Petro Canada was privatized. Petro Canada used to be run by the government is now a private company, right. right? Nobody is really talking about doing that as far as Canadian healthcare goes. We're not talking about like turning our hospitals into for-profit businesses. What we're talking about is, and we're also not talking about bringing in private health insurance to cover things that are currently covered by the public plan. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're simply talking about expanding the public plan to cover services provided at existing privately run facilities, right. right? So you can go to these privately run facilities, which have sort of been existing in the shadows all of these years. <laughs> but now the government, you know, in Ontario, they're sort of the most advanced on this. The government is simply saying that if you go to a private clinic, the government will pick up the tab via your public health insurance card or program or whatever. Right. And that is very different than privatization. It's merely talking about private delivery covered by uh, public insurance. But again, it's like these distinctions I feel are frustratingly not known and the public is not literate enough in this kind of language of private delivery versus public coverage. And that just contributes to a climate in which anything that has the word private associated with it in any way becomes demonized as American style and all this. Yeah. And I think that's a great point because we all, we're almost in this binary, right? There's like in our mind, there's the Canadian style of healthcare yes. and there there's American style of healthcare. However, we're ignorant of the fact that there are many European countries, certainly other countries around the world, that have different models of delivering healthcare. Sweden is a great example where they do have public universal healthcare, but they also have private competition. And in their public healthcare, if you're not able to get a test within certain days or certain treatment within a certain time period, as a Swedish resident, you can go to private clinics and, and effectively, as you said, the, the government gets billed for it. You're not paying for it out of pocket. And there's even rules around healthcare workers perhaps uh, having to work a certain amount in the public sector before they can start billing in the quote unquote private sector. Why are we so stuck in this binary of American system versus Canadian system? And why aren't we opening our horizons or broadening our horizons to other forms of healthcare. Because our whole conception, our whole national identity <laughs> is just based around shallow anti-Americanism, right? So it's like, and it's worth noting that like- Our whole identity? Uh, pretty much, okay. I would say so. It's very <laughs> difficult to find something that Canadians are proud of or that Canadians even identify as an identifiably or important Canadian thing that yeah. doesn't have some dimension of anti-Americanism to it, hmm. you know? But it's worth noting that because of this pervasive cult of anti-Americanism as so center to our, our identity, we don't even like honestly understand how the American system works. Like I agree the American system is definitely a one extreme end of the spectrum mm -hmm. based on OECD nations. But at the same time, like every American is not whipping out their credit card every time they have to get, you know, some stitches or their brain removed or whatever, right? It's like Americans have insurance. Americans happen to have private insurance. We generally have public insurance. But even then, it's also worth noting that most Canadians also have some form of private insurance too, right? right. When it comes to covering all of the things that are not covered by the medical plan. And we also have private insurance to cover the dentist. You know, I just went to the dentist yesterday and, you know, I have to pay with 
within my blue cross thing, sure. which I pay into, right? Yeah. So it's like we have the capacity to sort of like understand these sort of nuances because in many ways we already live them because there's already large segments of the insurance and healthcare system in this country that's already privately run. But because we're so obsessed with anti-Americanism and, and because, you know, we've been, we've allowed like they do polls on this and Canadians are more proud of the healthcare system than the flag or the constitution or democracy or anything. And that's not healthy. Yeah. But you know it's certainly not healthy when healthcare is failing. And I think yeah. we also have to recognize that healthcare is one of those areas where as technology progresses things actually get more expensive. Usually as technology progresses, things get cheaper. Yes. But healthcare is one of those fields that just with machinery and technology and even manpower, things do get more expensive. And yes. I, I feel like the Canadian identity is is kind of still a work in progress. You know, we've certainly shed certain things, adopted new things, you know, when it comes to multiculturalism. Mm. Uh, why isn't this something that is malleable? Like, why are we so attached to this, even as the healthcare system itself is failing, even as, you know, provincial governments are using and relying on privatized healthcare? I think it's because that the American system is still seen as being worse. And I think that, <laughs> frankly, like Americans themselves and, and sort of the deficiencies of the American healthcare system is a much larger part of the American political conversation than it used to be. So like if you're a Canadian who consumes a lot of American news, as most Canadians do, you are constantly bombarded with stories about how horrible and terrible the American healthcare system is. You know, despite Obamacare, despite in many ways the system having made a lot of progress and, you know, it's over like 90 percent of Americans now have sufficient health care coverage by their own admission. Mm -hmm. Right. We're still constantly told that the system in America is bad. It's terrible. It's hellish, blah, 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 blah. And again, like nobody's talking about adopting that system. But as long as that binary, which is, again, like the quintessential binary that defines Canadian identity, as long as that is perceived to exist, then I think Canadians, you know, middle class Canadians will shrug their shoulders and say, like, our system might have its problems, but at least it's better than America. So as a result, I often wonder if the only way that this will change is if the American system changes, right? Like <laughs> if someday some like AOC becomes president sure. and she introduces like, you know, Medicare for all or whatever. Yeah. And then that kind of takes the issue off the table. And then, you know, we're kind of more at an equal playing field. And so we can look more honestly at our own system. Really quickly, is there a political space for a party to actually introduce some of these reforms, or will any party that reduce that introduces or or even suggests some of these reforms, will they just be stereotyped as yeah. you know you're introducing American style broken yes. healthcare? Yes, 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 they will be. So okay, so there's I, no space there's, to talk there, about it. There's no space to do it publicly. <laughs> I think that there is space to do it secretly, which is bad, <laughs> right? I mean, our NDP government is doing it secretly, and they're getting you know fined by Ottawa for doing sure. so. Yeah. Our transfer payments are getting reduced because we're doing too much of this, but we're doing it in the shadows, and so it doesn't. <laughs> really seem to be sticking to the NDP government of this province the way it is to Premier Ford, who's done it publicly. Yeah. So are we going to get cancelled for having this conversation? Yeah, probably. <laughs> JJ, a pleasure. I hope to see you, a lot more of you, uh, as the season continues. So thanks Thank so, so much, much for your time tonight. Always a pleasure. Folks, find him on YouTube to learn about countries, culture, and Canada. A fan favorite of yours, I know he is JJ McCullough. And as I said, since he is such a fan favorite, expect to see more of JJ more often right here on This Is Van Color. Now up next, are we allowed to call our political leaders hot? Probably not, but what if we sing about it? Angela Valiant is here and as always, she brought her ukulele and I promise you won't wanna miss it. <laughs>